Paul, if you don't mind, if somebody else comes in, will you just help with the, get the name tags and the material and stuff? All right, well, good evening, everybody, and, and those of you that are watching online here, this is our kickoff session for the 2015, but well, we're into 2016 cycle of RCIA Catechumen. Uh, I've met with most of you, if not all of you, from, in terms of, if you haven't met with me and you think you're in the process, then you do need to be with me. So, but I'm looking at all the faces. I think I've met with everybody here. Um, and so what I want to do tonight to get us started is to go through some basically introductory or in, in as many cases this is re going over what I've already talked about. But I just want to make sure because with a few of you it's been like almost two months or two and a half months since we actually talked. So I want to spend a little time and just go through what this process is all about. So I first just want to welcome you here to be part of this process. Um, it's great. I am excited to be a part of it. I'm just in my third month of this job. Um, we just brought in people at the vigil and we're still bringing in people in the Easter season here that have been in this process and uh, it's been a joy to watch that complete and I'm, I'm equally excited to see a whole new group of people that are interested in looking into becoming Catholic. Uh, the Lord has brought you here and it's a wonderful thing. I'm glad to be a part of it. So what I want to do first is open like we're going to open all of our sessions in prayer and we're going to use the prayer that's in the Symbolon uh, session so you can take your your participants book there there should be a prayer and we'll start all of our prayers as we do as Catholics with the sign of the cross so um, we're going to start and just join with me as we pray Has everybody got the prayer okay in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. For it was you who formed my inward parts you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. All right. Um, before we go into the thing, I was just going to ask if anybody here was at the bishop's installation yesterday. Anybody make that? Yes? What were your impressions? What was it like? I thought it was fabulous. I loved it. I loved every second of it. Yep. Pretty amazing the top of the cathedral is about to blow off, wasn't it? Yeah, I love all the bishops being up there and all the priests that we have known, you know, through yep. the years. Yep. I love everything. Yeah, really? What do you think? Oh, I thought it was incredible. Pretty pretty amazing, wasn't it? Yep. Who else? Anybody else? What do you think, Paula? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Was the singing pretty pretty powerful? Uh -huh. Oh yeah. 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 It was it was. So hopefully we've got a new bishop. We're all excited. Uh, he's going to be fantastic. I, I'm excited for you to get to know him. Um, I wouldn't be surprised he'll be showing up here sometime in this. I'm going to try to get him in one of these sessions just to meet you guys. So, um, so Bishop Stowe, Bishop John, he likes to be called Bishop John. Um, and he's, he's going to be great for the diocese. And uh, so we're just so glad to have him. Okay. First thing I want to do is introduce the team of people that are going to be assisting me throughout the year here. And um, so just real quickly, I'm just going to introduce them. Uh, and if you look on your, on your other handout where we got the schedule, on the second page, they're all listed there with contact information. So I'm just going from the top, Paul, that's back there. Paul, hold your hand up so everybody knows who you are. Paul you Kelly. Yeah. Need a handout? Okay. And then we have uh, Eric hasn't made it yet. So Eric's not here yet. Uh, Daryl, face heart, right here in the front. And Gabriella Gomez, back. Gabriella and Paul were demoing how Catholics sit when they come into liturgy. They were in the back. So that's something you'll quickly learn. But you all are picking it up pretty good. Everybody that got here early was in the back row. So. Um, and so when Eric, if Eric gets here, we'll make sure we introduce him. So I don't, we haven't worked out exactly our schedule. There will, you know, probably all of us will not be here every week. 
So we're going to kind of rotate this, and people have work schedules and families, you know, uh, commitments and things. So we will typically have uh, one or two, two of us for here for sure. That's the, the goal. Um, if we have more than that, then that's what we'll do. But uh, but we have our contact information. If you have questions about what's going on that week, or you got a, you know, you're going to miss, and you want to let us know, please do uh, feel free to use these contacts to to get that to us. So that's the team that will be. Joining us, and by the way, what I'm pretty much doing is going down the, the third page. I'm starting on the third page of, of that handout. Um, so where are we all headed? I, I, when I sat down with each of you individually, I tried to lay out the sort of the core, the basics of the RCIA process. Um, for you that are unbaptized catechumens, you're pretty much headed towards the Easter Vigil next year. Um, and you will be assuming that, you know, all of us agree that you're ready, then you will be received into the church, initiated, meaning you'll be baptized, receive the First Communion, and be confirmed at the Easter Vigil. Um, so again, for those of you that are in the, and, and you're known as catechumens, that's the, 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 t, the official term for the unbaptized in this process. Uh, if you're a candidate, meaning you've been baptized in another Christian faith tradition, then um, you will be received into the church, meaning you're gonna make that profession of faith we talked about when I met with each one of you, make your first communion and your confirmation uh, all on, um, that at, at mass, at whatever mass that is. Now that can happen at different times. Most of you will probably come in during the Easter season next year. So sometime between Easter and Pentecost. Some of you may go sooner than that. There are some of you that are, are continuing on from this year for various reasons. So. The, in, in the case of the uh, candidates, when we decide you're ready and everything's a go, it can happen when it needs to happen. Um, so that's a, an individual thing, and you all will continue to talk to me about that as we go through the process. Um, so that's kind of where we're headed. Um, how do you get to your destination? And I just have this little section. This is a process. It really is a process, and it's that. And, and they use it in the video tonight that we're going to watch, or the two videos. It's a journey, and this is part of your all, a longer journey, but this part of is also a journey. Um, and I, hopefully, I'll mention this to all of you. It's easy to try to reduce this to an intellectual exercise, like I'm going to learn all the facts and figures and the teachings and the doctrines of the faith, and that's what this is all about. That's only that's part of it. That's part of it. to learn what it means to be Catholic. You do have to get all that. But if that's all you get you've really missed the boat. That this is really about a journey of faith, a journey of a relationship between you and God. And wherever you're at on that journey, I'm, I'm assuming you all already have a relationship with God, or you wouldn't be here. But wherever you are on that journey, hopefully this, journey, this part of the journey will take you deeper. So as you learn what the fullness of the faith is in the Catholic Church, you'll discover a new depth in your relationship with God. That is to me even more important than learning all of the facts and figures because you can pick up a book and read the facts and figures. But it's more important to me that you're deepening that relationship with Jesus Christ at the end of all this. And if, and if you feel like you're not, if that's not happening, then let's talk. Let's, let's get underneath that. because. Again, you, you'll pick up more and more teaching, more and more doctrine after you've come into the church. Um, I hope you will. I hope you don't look at this like when you graduate. You know, this is not a graduation. When you receive into the church, you're not graduating. You're just hitting a, a key milestone of your journey. We're all going to continue to grow. But, but I just can't drive that home. You know, God's grace is being poured out on you through this process. You just need to be aware of that uh, during the week. Like, don't turn, don't partition this off. Like, okay, now I'm going to do the RCIA thing as it's Thursday, it's 6:30, and this is what I'm supposed to do. You, as you, everything that you're listening, you're reading, you're studying, you're watching the videos, you're talking to your sponsor. The other six days of the week, you should be thinking about that, praying with that, meditating about it. What difference does it make in my life? And is, am I being asked, is the Lord wanting me to change something that I'm doing? All right? So integrate this in. This is the message, right? you we got, you got to really integrate this into everything that you do and who you are. 
and and so on. So again, if if that's not happening for some reason, then I think you know with your sponsor, I'm going to keep talking about sponsors because that's what sponsors are there to do is to help you when you hit those roadblocks, you hit the spiritual roadblocks or the physical roadblocks or the scheduling roadblocks, and you need help. That's why you have a sponsor to try to help you sort that out. And if you need my help, then please call me and the three of us will work through whatever it is. So please, um, I, I'll just keep pleading with you through the year, don't reduce this to a checklist of, okay, I've got, there's 20 videos, there's two each, that's 40, so, gee, I could take a long weekend and I could just watch all of them, right? I mean, you could do that, but you'd be wasting your time, really. You'd be wasting your time because that's not what the process is about. So, um, so that's my opening little invitation to make this part of your life so that what we experience in this hour and a half on Thursday night is going to flow over into the rest of your life and the rest of your week and you can take some time and that's only going to happen and I know how busy everybody is because I am too if you don't force the time during the week to have that time of prayer meditation reflection it's not going to happen so you know that's something you just have to take responsibility for again use your sponsor say how do you do it how do you pray when do you pray you know and, and just use your sponsor in that way to help you establish these kind of disciplines that it's going to take to really take full advantage of the process okay need sponsors uh, identify the next two weeks got to make sure so I can switch pages on the screen here um, I've got many of you have already started sending me this information so please continue to do that and if you don't have a sponsor right now and you need help I have a couple of you that I am working on a sponsor for you. Um, so in the next week or two, we should hopefully get that all squared away and everybody has a sponsor. Um, and I put on here a, a couple of links what the requirements of a sponsor are uh, and, and then the role of a sponsor. So, um, but I don't want any, any sponsors, if you're talking to somebody, to feel we've got a lot of flexibility with the way we've laid this out with these videos. Um, and I know some of you already have sponsors and you're working out some really in, ingenious or, you know, good ways of, of them watching the videos and then getting together on a schedule that works for all of you. Um, and, and that's what it's all about. So if, if you're talking to somebody about being your sponsor and you really want them, you, you have, you know, you, you trust them, you feel like they're the right person. Maybe they're feeling like, gosh, I'm not ready. You know, a lot of sponsors feel like they're not qualified. They're, you know, that's really the biggest. I'm not worthy. I'm not qualified. And so if, if I can help put a sponsor's mind at ease in terms of what we're asking people to do, please have them talk to me. Um, because this is not in the, most sponsors, 95% of sponsors that come through the process, at the end of it say they grew immensely themselves by having been a sponsor. They learned a lot about their faith. They grew closer to the Lord, and and they helped somebody else along the way. So it's all good. So if I can help, if you're talking to somebody about being your sponsor and they, they need a little convincing or smooth talking, then have them come to me because I'll try to make them you know understand this is not an overwhelming responsibility. It, it can be fit into your schedule in a lot of ways. If they can't come on Thursday nights, that's okay. We of course encourage sponsors to come as often as they can, but if, it, if they can, the way we've got this put together, it's, it can be worked around. So, um, so there's the sponsors thing. I know several of you have marriage and annulment issues, things that are going on. We talked about that individually. We're obviously not going to talk about those here, but my message to you as we get started here is to keep me, there's, right now I've got 36 of you on the list of people that are going through the process. I can't possibly keep up with where everything is. I, I keep notes, um, but I'm really counting on you as, as that annulment process works or you're getting with your advocate working through all that. Just keep me posted in general. With, I don't need to know the details of where things are at or what's going on or who's talking to who. Or, but I just need to know where you're at because, and the, it's, the impact is from an RCIA perspective is, You'll be able to go through some of the initial rights, like the right of welcoming and right of acceptance, which is the first right we're going to do probably in about a month and a half. 
You can do that while an annulment's in progress. You cannot be received into the church until that successfully completes. So that's why I care, right? I need to know where all of that is. And if you have one that's in progress and they take a while, um, we just want to keep our eye on that. So I don't expect like weekly updates or something like that. I'm just saying as things change and you make progress, just keep me posted so I can know where you're at in that. Uh, for those of you that have those, those things going on that I can know where you're at. Okay. The next steps um, that we have is, I mentioned, the right of acceptance and welcome. Those are the first formal rights that you're going to go through coming through this process. Usually, we'll probably do them in, in mid-June. That's what I'm considering at this point. I've got to work out the scheduling with the, with the church, and it'll be on a Sunday. And I'll explain the right as we get closer as to what it is exactly. But um, um, so they're, they're very similar rights, but they are different for the catechumens and candidates. So once I know what the dates are, um, as many people as there are will probably do it in at least a couple of weekends at a couple of different masses. Um, so I'll let you know how that, that works as we get uh, a couple of weeks from now, probably. Um, for the catechumens, for those of you that are not baptized, um, once you go through the right, now this is not starting now, right? This is starting once you go through the right of acceptance, which will be that mid-June time frame. So once you've gone through that, we're going to, you all are going to be dismissed at, at the 1115 Mass. Okay, and at the, so once you get through the Gospel and the homily, the Father will come forward and ask you to stand, and then he'll, he'll give you a, a blessing, he'll pray, he'll tell you that we're praying for you, and then he'll dismiss you to go out and we're going to have break up, breaking open the word. So basically you're going to go with uh, one of the team. We're going to start with Pam Johnson, but we may work some of our team into this as well. So again, this happens at the 1115 Mass. You'll be dismissed after the homily. You're going to go to the parish library, and you're basically going to discuss the readings that you just heard, the homily and sort of just break that open and talk about the relevance that it has in your life. So um, that's, that's the breaking open the word part. So again, that's just for the catechumens. If you're a candidate, you're already initiated into the body of Christ by virtue of your baptism. You stay at Mass. You don't participate in communion, but you can participate in the rest of the Mass in the sense of being there and experiencing what's going on at Mass. So, um, so that's a little different between the catechumens and the candidates. Now for the catechumens, I did put the procedure here, and I'm not going to go through this step by step, um, but there is a, so you need to let the, if you're at a, um, let, me, let me stop. The 1115 Mass is where we do breaking open the Word, and that'll be every Sunday once we get through the rite of acceptance. So what you do, though, is you go to the priest, well, I said, I said I'm not going to go through it, so you're not going to go through it. If you're at another Mass, if you're at another Mass other than the 1115, you're still going to go, what you're going to do then is go to the priest and tell them you're there, that there's a catechumen present at the Mass. They will dismiss you at the same time during the Mass. At that point, I would just suggest you go to the Adoration Chapel when you're dismissed and spend some time in prayer and do your own personal reflection on, you know, again, the readings that you just heard proclaimed, whatever was preached in the homily you would reflect on that as part of your adoration time. And then when you're, you know, and that's up to you to self, you know, if you want to do that for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then when you're done, you can leave and go on your way. So again, for catechumens, um, so the point is, once we go through the rite of acceptance, you don't stay at the mass any longer, you get dismissed at a mass, but you need to let the priest know that you're there, so they know to dismiss you. They can't, they can't look out and there's no like, mark over your head that says somebody's here that needs to be dismissed. So, and they're used to this, so don't don't feel like when you go back to the sacristy where they're vesting, you just walk back there like you know what you're doing. And you say, I'm a catechumen, can you dismiss me? And they'll say, wonderful, welcome, yes. 
So that's all you need to do. And the rest of the procedures there, you can kind of read through that and ask me if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to use an announcement. Okay. All right, we're almost done here. Um, weekly sessions, all right. As I mentioned, the sponsors are obviously encouraged to be here uh, if you can, but if you can't, then please, for sponsors, obviously view the videos. And by the way, I, I sort of check with people. Um, if you have any problems, if you had problems setting up to get to the Cymbalon material, let me know and we can work through that. But that's, again, the primary thing that we're going to be using. So if you haven't already done it, then you need to do that right away um, so that we can, so what we're going to, and so that's how we're going to do the, these sessions. Um, the sponsor weeks, you'll notice in the schedule, about once a month, not every month, but most of the months, there's a sponsor week scheduled in. And that's, that's emphasizing the point that it's important that you spend time with your sponsor. It doesn't have to be that day, right? But I, I schedule time in because it's, it's, it's important time. Uh, a sponsor should never be looked at like some sort of just a formality, right? So we give you the time, so that even if it's a different day of that week or whatever, spend some time that week with your sponsor, talking about what you've done since the, you know, the last few weeks, um, and whatever you need to do in terms of talking with them and staying in contact. Um, number three there, watch the first video. I talked to a couple people, they hadn't got things set up. So we're gonna watch both videos tonight. I know a few of you have done that, and that's great, but I know some of you didn't, and I'm sort of gonna cut you some slack because it is the first week. So, but I would please, please, please get the account set up. Make sure you can get in there to watch the videos and, and watch that first video before you come to the session on Thursday, right? It's only about eight to 10 minutes. It doesn't take very long, but it's a good intro to what we're gonna be talking about that week. And, it, and you may, it may trigger questions that you walk in with. So then when we watch the second video, you're, you're, you're primed and ready to go for that. So, uh, and if you have any problems, either contact myself or one of the team um, and see if we can sort out what your technical issue might be getting into the videos. But uh, so far, I haven't heard anybody that said they couldn't get there. They finally got it um, and made it in. So uh, hopefully it's, it's working. Um, if you can't make it to class, you know, other than letting me know, I, I'd appreciate it. If you do let me know if something comes up, even at the last minute, just drop me an email or text uh, uh, my phone. Let's see, what number did I put in here? I'll end up giving you my cell phone number at some point, but I think I put my office number in here. Yeah, I put my office number. But uh, I'll send around my cell phone number, especially for like a last minute thing. I'll get the text faster than I will get a message off my phone. Um, but if you can't make it to one of the sessions, that's going to happen. I know, a lot of you already know it's going to happen. And again, I keep bringing up the sponsors, but that's where the sponsors can help and say, you know, schedule time with them, watch the videos together or separate, and then talk about them. However you all want to work it out is, is wonderful, but just stay on the schedule with us so we, we can all stay together with that. Um, and then, I'll, again, I'm, I'm going to record. Uh, we have some speakers coming in throughout the year, so I'm going to record all of that and try to get it up on the web, like, within a couple of days at, at the outside. Um, once I get better with this video stuff, I'll be able to get it up pretty quick. Uh, and so you'll be able to watch the speakers if you can't be here. So all of this stuff, basically the, everything we're doing here, you can deal with remotely. Now, lest you sort of use that as your excuse for not coming, I will also say um, you're going to lose a lot by not being with this group. Uh, there's just something that happens when people get together and they're motivated and they're trying to go deeper in their faith. There's a dynamic that happens and it's just not the same when you're doing it like in a closet on your own. So uh, I understand work things happen, family things happen, that's going to happen. That's all understood. Uh, but I would just encourage you as often as you can be here and do it here with the group, I think it's the most, you're going to get the most out of it when you do it that way. So, um, so I'll leave it at that. Um, final thoughts, and then we're going to do move on. Okay.
And I, and I, I wrote this this afternoon. I just I just really wrote these thoughts. Um, and they just kind of flowed out. You know, God is in love with all of us far beyond anything we can imagine. And, and the Bible uses that romantic terminology. God just loves us in a way that we can't possibly remember. And I wrote this, this quote I've got here. You are a magnificent, beautiful, unique, and unrepeatable creation of God's love. A, a catechist came here at a conference last two weeks ago and gave us that quote, and it just sat with me, and it's just an unbelievable way to express in a human terms how God views us, right? We're beautiful, we're unique, and we're unrepeatable. Creation of His love. So that's why I say don't reduce the process to a checklist. We're trying to learn about a God who loves us beyond anything we can possibly imagine. We'll never get our arms around that. This process isn't going to do that for you, but it's going to help. And so to the extent you can be open to that and let this process work in you, then that's what I hope for you that, that happens. Be a part of the church. Be a part of the life of the church. You know, this is not like, okay, I'm working to be Catholic, and then when I get received into the church, then I'll start being Catholic. Now you start being Catholic now. So to the extent you come to Mass, to the extent you see things happening with different social outreach opportunities or charity uh, ministries, and there's something that speaks to you, then go for it. You don't have to be a member of the church to participate in the life of the church. And I would just encourage you, because that's how you're going to really find out if you want to be Catholic, is by getting involved in things. So, yes, this is the primary way you learn about being Catholic, but to the extent you can and you're called, then go for it. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Um, stay close with your sponsors. I've talked about that. Um, use us as the team. If we, can, if we can help you in any way answering questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And again, the process is here to help deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ and His church. So um, make that time each day during the week. Carve it out. Be disciplined about it. And spend that time with the Lord reflecting on all of this that you're learning and experiencing and discussing with this group. So um, with that, I'm going to be quiet. And I'm going to turn off the video. And then we're going to watch the, the two videos for the first unit here.